In this video, we will be discussing about embedded system design using FPGAs. Embedded systems are usually single function applications. In the sense, uh, they have very less components, uh, less uh, they should be designed at uh, very less cost, uh, low power, and also need to provide real time response. Uh, we will consider the constraints to consider the embedded system design. Real-time response in the sense of an automatic washing machine like a microwave oven. Uh, we will set time in that particular time. Uh, that, uh, uh, execution should be done. Uh, real-time response. There should not be any change in the uh, time. That uh, is the embedded system that we have to use the feature. Uh, Real-time response and also power. Power constraints are very important for the embedded system. Why? Because um, in embedded system we have those uh, particular functions we have to use the elements of the corresponding memory power constraints. Uh, and uh, they should be like ease of programming, uh, portability of coding, and uh, uh, constraints and body embedded system design. Now, microcontroller versus FPGA. In okay, embedded system design, uh, uh, we used to make use of microcontrollers. Uh, microcontrollers in the FPGA we have a difference or advantage on the camera. Microcontrollers are uh, have been preferred all these years. FPGA is the portability of code. For all FPGA vendors, no, all our portability of code, reprogrammability or uh, reusable code, we are going to do low cost programming tools. So that is FPGA advantage. Now, uh, FPGA also have um, our faster operation as all. Uh, can also be achieved by using an FPGA uh, in order to uh, achieve the requirement like our target application uh, achieve Yanola our uh, speed and efficiencies uh, now being obtained from FPGAs too. So FPGAs are uh, being used for embedded system uh, nowadays that's because of certain advantages like FPGAs have the capability to start a system software development simultaneously with hardware. Apart performance simulation, we early enough to uh, start the system. our final system producing in Mumbai, we can do so many trials and design iterations. Design uh, iterations, or uh, stage by stage, we can do it. Finally, we can system develop the system. Now, the FPGAs provide in the features on reconfigurability or the so-called reprogrammability and to add the modifications that can be done. In a software defined design, the hardware is defined by software like languages HTL and which is very much easy to work with. In a parallelism, very important title or advantage, Anna. We have seen it in DSP design of FPGAs. For parallelism, all the one door, single clock cycle, then you have so many operations being done. Apart from that, then you get higher speed and higher efficiency, performance, everything, reliability, uh, and also IP protection and reuse. These are all the uh, advantages of FPGA. In embedded system design. Now, any FPGA based embedded system design, uh, we, uh, we have the two modules on the control module and upper level module. The controller module develops describe AMADIT. What all we need is uh, we have to select the core processor. Pin amount of on chip memory required, peripheral modules, etc. And that is from the FPGA vendor library. 
uh, are um, that we generate the STL file. This yes, STL file is the control module in description. In the second step, we have the controller module instantiate and the upper level module in the upper level module. Now, a typical digital system design involves uh, we customize the logic circuit. Uh, it also includes some uh, major components, pre-designed idle components and processors, memory units, input-output interfaces. That's why embedded system designed the embedded system in the processor, memory units, and input-output components. Uh, traditionally, what happens is that our IC chip like custom logic circuits uh, are created and uh, pre-designed components are created. It is included as a separate chip. But FPGA what you can do is uh, today's IC technology, uh, what you can do is everything can be into a single chip. But in FPGA, we have a predefined like predesigned major components, memory units, input output interfaces, okay? uh, along with the uh, major chip in the code, we incorporate yeah. Now coming to the types of embedded core processors, for hardcore embedded processors and softcore embedded processors. Uh, hardcore embedded processors are uh, those uh, that are uh, that are actually dedicated physical component of the chip uh, separate from the programmable logic. Silence vertex uh, family LM hardcore embedded processors are uh, while softcore embedded processors are built out of the programmable logic on the chip. Uh, Ultra Neos and Silence Microblaze are uh, softcore embedded processors. So uh, now this, uh, let us see the steps in the embedded design process. If you have embedded system designed, we have a few steps like requirements. Uh, just uh, look for our requirements. Other kind of specifications and DACA specification is like documentation. Uh, and then we go for the hardware and software uh, design, architect or other architectural design. And finally, you integrate this hardware and software into the whole system. Embedded system design process uh, for FPGA is being done. We choose an evaluation board. Uh, other conditions are being uh, given here. An evaluation board that is supported by the development software and uh, what really matches the peripheral and IO requirements and etc. And depending on that, we select the FPGA. Now construct the printed circuit board PCB design on the FPGA and create the embedded system design project. Upon a silence embedded design flow, no okay, case software design and hardware design. Hardware system design, that is render part of hardware and software design chain, and these are uh, integrated in, to form the whole system. In hardware system, you have the base system. Uh, in custom peripherals, input output peripherals, and then all the peripherals and all customize either that is also being added. And then uh, we connect uh, the design input output peripherals, some chip and the other connections some carrying uh, is being uh, done. And finally, the hardware is built. Uh, uh, parallelly, you have the software design in which we configure the software platform, develop and debug the software applications. And finally, the random would incorporate it, and you get the whole hardware and software uh, uh, launcher and the whole system now generate the amplitude. Now, for integrating an F embedded FPGA, you can see the main part of the uh, embedded system includes a, a chip, FPGA chip. Uh, connections or other bus system are all shown here. 
about you have the SPIs or peripherals, serial peripheral interface 0 and 1 and SPI. 0 and SPI 1, they are the peripherals. Then you have uh, the APB. APB is system is advanced peripheral bus. Uh, you have the interfaces for input output uh, max and SOC input output. The clock converters, advanced extensible interface bus for clock circuitry. In the embedded system designed two main aspects. Nyambarno hardware and software parties to are combined to form the whole system. With the software, we create the system hardware and develop the software that should be run, run on the processor. Hardware circuit and create uh, we make use of processor, uh, memory, uh, and all the communication modules that are required. This software allows easy instantiation of these sub-circuits. Sub easily automatically interconnect and FPGA uh, communicate uh, we, uh, the software gives a way. Electronic design automation tools, CDA tools are being used uh, to access the system's hardware resources. Uh, you can see about uh, e high density low cost FPGA or other one to the FPGA embedded system design using FPGA has become very easier now. So well, this is the basic block diagram of an FPGA based embedded system design. Well, the main part will be the chip or, or the CPU uh, or the main processor. You have the FPGA chip. Pine, uh, you have all the sensors for whatever data is required. Apadhanola sensors are Censoring the good data will be normally analog, which has to be given to uh, for digital conversion and a digital data header, it is given to the processor. You have the user interface and diagnostic port, auxiliary systems, and also uh, electromechanical uh, backup safety all elements. Pinne uh number a processor of course Embedded system, then you have the memory and the software part. Uh, our execution of the current, you get the data out, which is again converted to analog uh, uh, signal, which can be given to actuators. So, this is the basic block diagram of an FPGA based embedded system design. Even there, a simple example is given here. There, uh, a simple example of an embedded system. Uh, design on uh, that is motor controller in which you have the motor or multi-axis motor drivers for motor controller the design is the beginner silence fpga which uh, and you have the other elements like power supply you uh, are for uh, communication uh, then you have the interfaces and clock uh, and reset circuitry uh, for those clocking purposes well, this is a simple block diagram of uh, uh, embedded system based uh, on FPGA. Uh, that is the motor control. Now, what are the advantages of FPGA based system design? Here, uh, we have the CPU and input output functions all which are merged onto a single board. Matrala uh, namka, our design is flexible. We can optimize power, uh, data, and also everything can be optimized uh, and flexibly designed based on the input-output requirements and application. Similarly, uh, there is a trade-off uh, between hardware and software tasks, which gives us higher speed and higher efficiency, higher performance. We make use of advanced uh, tools for software and um, hardware development tool. So these are the references that I have used uh, for preparing this. Thank you.